I, I was, you know, believing in Among Us. I think before we came live with Game One, I was like, yeah, I think, you know, so I think Among Us has got these, you know, the big name players. They've warmed up. Um, you know, they've, they're not going to be picking IO again. But I think that was kind of my inner boomer speaking. It's just like <laughs> I look at the, the 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 player names. I'm just like, yeah, dude, they have Abed, Marsh, you know, right. team, like Cuckoo, like. Who is this new, young, mostly Thai team? Like, these, these guys can't beat this roster. Right. <laughs> but no, they, these guys are legit. They're like the new hot team in SEA. Um, and yeah, they're, they're doing fan they, they got first place in the group stage with, for a reason. Mm -hmm. Part of the thing, the reason that it gives me a little bit more hope is just seeing how willing they are on Among Us to throw everything out of the window from the last draft and do something completely new. And it feels like with that formula, at some point, they're going to find something that works. So it's less about the play and more about the approach to the draft I'm seeing. But then again, you look at this, you know, Motivate Trust team, and it's it's almost entirely a new thing as well um, in some regards. The the last track to me is a really interesting pick to take in the second phase. Yeah, I'm curious to see where Ten this ends up being remaining. played. We've seen quite a bit of three position last track. Five seconds um, remaining. A Lesh clock lane. Like, usually if you're playing Lesh Rack in that side lane, either as a three or four, you want to have some kind of setup for it. Um, we've seen some mid Lesh Rack. We've seen some carry Lesh, Lesh Rack. We've seen it played in all kinds of different roles. I would like to see it with the, the highest possible farm priority that they can justify for it. So mid would be ideal for me. Uh, I actually don't know how the Kanka Lesh mid lane matchup goes now that like lightning's been buffed and edict seems to be a more popular build these days i would feel like kanka comes out on top but we'll have to see yeah but i think it's maybe even with the slight edge to kanka okay. yeah, yeah. i would agree I, the other thing about the kanka versus lesh dynamic is that at six well i i guess that it depends at, at, at like seven you're going to be able to kill the lesh you you can't really stay in that lane super easily because you're going to take tidebringer hits if you get clipped by a random torrent uh, at any point in time, he's going to be able to run up and X you, and then boat comes through. So I think it gets really scary mid. Regardless, um, the reason why I want a high farm priority is because we had kind of talked about Leshrac versus Silencer, where Leshrac mm -hmm. doesn't really care. Despite being a spellcaster mid, he kind of just turns everything on and then walks into the team fight. After that, he's not really casting spells. He's just walking around with Pulse Nova and Edict ticking. Yeah. So doesn't really get too affected by the Silencer. And great against Phantom Assassin early on, and then after she gets BKB, you've got physical damage with your Life Stealer. Five seconds remaining. So Motivate Trust kind of checking all the boxes that I'd want. They have push as well. I kind of want to see an Among Us take some other BKB piercing uh, off laner next. Um, I, I wouldn't mind seeing an Axe, although that hero is mega dead. Um, or maybe a Legion or something Yeah, like I wonder that. if this Lifesteal pick maybe pushes your Kunk into three position, though. Well, they may have been planning that already. You think so? Well, because it's... to say. I just think you, you... The Kunk just isn't as impactful when you can't actually deal with the enemy carry. Um, That's true. Probably depends on where they feel like they can find their Lifesteal answers. But yeah, the heroes like Beastmaster with the roar of BKB piercing Sable. Enigma, honestly, you know, I, hey. it seems like a hero that only Liquid's playing right now, but... Uh, but the, you, I'm, I'm with you that I feel like Hunka should be turned into a 3, though. Yeah. Right. I, I think that there are still ways that you can make it work because you've got global, right? So hypothetically, you're not going to want to be building BKB or something like that on Lifestealer necessarily. So you could maybe still go for like an X combo and then hit it up with the global afterwards. Very, very tanky frontliner now for Motivate Trust. And they ran this mid lane last time they picked it. Mm -hmm. So, so kind of rules out the Pugna. I mean, the. Well, okay, so I was going to say, I would actually like to see a Pugna on Among Us, but uh, it kind of rules out the Kanka mid, I would feel, having to go up against an Underlord. But again, there's flexibility. Leshrak and Underlord could both take over that mid lane. Kanka yeah. off lane, always a possibility. Not sure what you go here. Yeah, they left it very open and flexible. Like they think that's once some of the value with the Kunkka pick is that they could run it mid or off lane because typically you've got tenth pick of the draft, you're last picking your mid, um, and they're gonna yeah. get a Choose Weaver, a first <laughs> Weaver signing of the playoffs, maybe of the tournament. I don't know. I feel like I haven't seen a Weaver in forever. I think it's yeah, it's gonna be a Cuckoo off lane Weaver. What are they doing? They're crazy. Uh, you know. <laughs> 
That's a good question. This does not seem like an easy Weaver game. Weaver carry in the past was considered like a lifestealer counter in many ways, but yeah, it's not an easy Weaver game. And if it's a utility Weaver, like the Ags has gotten nerfed so much, that you need to be in like extremely close range to be able to save someone. Yeah, I wonder if he is going to be playing more as like a secondary carry and Abed's going to be going for all like the tanky utility yeah. build. Cuckoo's just not picking. He's like, no, I don't want to play that. Why did you pick this hero? <laughs> what are you I doing? Who's he la he's got an Earth Spirit to lane with, so he's got that kind of tanky hero to sit in front of him and they can play very aggressive. Yeah. He's not and it is indeed going to be a off lane Leshrac mid lane Underlord. So yeah, even the mid lane's not going to be that easy. Underlord versus Kanka. Pretty sure the last time we saw that matchup, the Underlord did like extremely well. You should be able to get some pretty decent last hits. Uh, you're not going to be able to deny against the Underlord, and he's probably going to yell at somebody dies. But you get the bonus damage at least on your Tidebringer hit. Well, Among Us yet again going for something a little bit extraordinary. I don't know if that's the direction they should be going in, though, seeing as how they lost game number one. But we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, it's going to be John X Fire and MLP casting game number two. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. We are here for game number two of this best of five grand final between Motivate Trust and Among Us. It is MLP Dota and John X Fire. John, welcome back, sir. Two new drafts here for us. But I've got to ask you, why is there an offlane Weaver in my game? Uh, Cuckoo kind of mentioned it in his interview, right? He he likes playing uh, weirder heroes. <laughs> Cuckoo actually giving yeah. a shout out to March for allowing this to come true. So there's your answer. He just wants to play something else. He says standard offlane standard offlaner heroes are boring. So he gets the Weaver March, and he's March gonna have a good time. A bit. <laughs> he wanted Vens. Same uh. S word. <laughs> Thank you for that, March. Uh, should be an interesting kind of uh, draft from these two, though, I'd say. Oh, yeah. It's a very big departure from game one. So the mid lane matchup, I think, is where that disparity shines. Like, you've got a Kunkka versus Underlord lane. And that is not very clear cut for the Kunkka. We have seen Fearless do this, as the panel has mentioned. Fearless has played this mid a couple times already. So Abed set for, again, a fairly even lane, although I can see Fearless kind of overtaking that. We'll see how that does unfold. And the side lanes are of great interest as well. Off lane Lush, like you talked about the Weaver. Lush rack in the off is also rather less common out. So we'll see what monsters can get out. Now, I have to say, I love the combination lane, though. Clockwork Lush is a deadly lane. Once you get level 2, level 3 up, you get the magic damage off. Your PA or your silencer is going to be very dead. I do agree with you on that, and I think it's going to be a very tough lane for March in particular on the Silencer. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you've already pointed it out, but the Battery Soul Cogs into the Split Earth of Maceros, and that's your Silencer gone. Of course, we'll have a quick look over to the mid lane where Arbed and Fearless are giving it to each other. Arbed understanding he has to be aggressive early on up against the Underlord, as once he has the Atrophy Aura up, it does become a much harder lane to contest as the Kunkka. Shout out to Arbid, by the way, John. He has the very nice Konka set on right now. Love that set. Oh, yeah. It's a, it's a lovely looking set. And I would call this one Cthulhu inspired. So going Don't back say that, to that. John. No, Didn't they no, rate I, that I as like say... a B or A or something? <laughs> mm. No. Don't say it. Don't remind me. That tier list gives me <laughs> nightmares. Still. You know, Fearless having a good time and the mid lane matchup is it's, it's a bit more boring. Like, it's a relatively farmy lane, although Fearless will cop some hits. When the Tidebringer's up, but he's also going to spam out the Firestorm, although he's out of mana. So we'll see who can get those uh, power runes when they're up. Always important for either mid. The bot lane, which we haven't talked about too much, is also rather unique, right? Like, you've got Q and the Void Spirit hanging around with Jackie's Life Stealer. So he's in a pause four, but playing in that safe lane, just playing tag with Zephyr to match that Earth Spirit Cuckoo on the Weaver, is finding steady farm here. So you are actually off to a good start in the roll. Yeah, Zephyr goes for a casual roll in down at the bot lane with a boulder smash out. So they are trying to go on to Jackie. They have plenty of damage there, but not quite enough to finish him off. Q will just force them back on the Void Spirit, but misses the range creep with that Aether Remnant. So it doesn't quite get the range creep secure. Bit unfortunate there for Q. Still top lane, we do see a lot of damage being dealt to the Clockwork, but... 
He's going to manage to just walk away. Burn Bell does end up salving up on the clockwork, and it's going to be uh, just fine. But mid lane, Fearless does end up dropping Arbit with the Tidebringer and Torrent, does end up getting the kill, and that's going to be a, a really good start for him on the Kunker. However, yeah. top lane, another team fight breaking out. March is going to die. Meanwhile, Masros also going down to In Your Dream in March. Boom Bell and In Your Dream are going to be left there. It's like Masros really wanted that kill onto the Sansa. Yeah, it's uh, still somewhat okay for Masros. And he finds the kill first. Um, you are giving In Your Dream some kills. So RPA is off to a pretty good start here. Really nice in the last hits as well. So they haven't slowed down the last hits off In Your Dream. He's going to find some smooth pacing out. I think if you're March, you don't mind that at all. You're not getting int stacks up. Permanent ink, int being built up, not an issue. Uh, they are just trying to stave off. There is a big spike though. Masaros is three, Boom Bell's two. If Boom Bell gets a good angle, they could just keep doing that over and over again. They can. Well, Jackie's uh, falling extremely low at the bot lane. And they have been very aggressive here. Kuku and Zephyr just continuing to roll in and Get those auto attacks off with a germinate attack from Cuckoo. It's a, quite a painful experience here for Jackie. Gonna jump back in onto Cuckoo now, but he's just gonna be able to Sakuchi away every time. Another boulder smash into the rolling boulder. Zephyr setting up. Meanwhile, top lane, Masros dropping very low to the PL and will die to march. But bottom lane, Zephyr does also die, and now Cuckoo will be chased down. Can he finish him off? He has the Resonant Pulse and he will commit it perfectly. Awesome. Got the right amount of damage off and they do clear out the offlane of Among Us. A very back and forth game already between these two teams. Yeah, you're just seeing the emphasis on those safe laners to get off to a running start. They're finding the punishment on those opposing, opposing offlaners as well. So you're off to a pretty even start here, tree to tree. I think the one thing you win out on is the fact that March is building up int stacks when he does find these kills. So two int now on March. He's, he's growing to be a smart guy. We'll see if that keeps up pace. They are going to scuffle over these bounty runes. They are. You'd think it would be Motivate Trust favored, but they pushed the wave in on the side of Among Us. So Masteros, he couldn't really leave that behind at the T1 tower. So it is going to mean that March does get that top bounty away. It looks like the bot bounties are going to go the way of the side of Among Us as well. So another three for one trade. Mind you, the first bounties at the zero minute mark were also a three to one to Among Us. So they, they are definitely finding gold here on the map through these bounty runes. As a uh, yeah, bottom lane, they do get a bit of damage off onto Jackie, but not too much. It's going to be just fine. It's like Q will get a nice little pull off there and Zephyr will just interrupt it. Yeah, Top uh... lane, in your dream. Getting low, he's thinking about turning back around here into Masaros. Masaros does have the Edict. Doesn't end up popping it as in your dream did have the Blink Strike ready to go. It's like in your dream really just wanted him to put that, that Diabolic Edict on cooldown. Uh, he'll get salved up now in your dream and he's going to remain in the lane just fine. Yeah, and I think the steady pace between both teams does favor Among Us a little bit more. They've got some clean spikes that come out earlier. Um, MG Trust will need some time and they jump in. They have jumped in, but they aren't going to be able to kill off Masaros. Not quite yet anyway. Meanwhile, bot lane, Cuckoo was in massive trouble. But he'll get out and Zephyr was trying to go after him, but couldn't quite catch him in the Dissimulate as the Void Spirit. So everyone will survive. Just barely, though. Jackie copying another boulder smash there from Zephyr. But there's no real kill potential now that Cuckoo is out of the lane. He's running his way back into the bot lane, but it's going to be a bit of time. Uh, we do go back into a slightly passive stage of this game. I say that, but it has been pretty non-stop. Yeah, it's, it's been three kills to three kills at six kills in seven minutes. Pretty good pace for both sides. I'd say a rather medium pace of kills, but they are kind of working their way up. Uh, you are seeing both mid laners focus on farm. Fearless is just clearing out his camps. Ku Abed is as well on his Kunkka, so keeping pace hold though. Yeah, Fearless is going to rotate in on the Unlord, and Zephyr is going to drop. That's the rotation out from Fearless. Seeing that Jackie was in a spot of danger does help set up a kill for himself on that Earth Spirit. Looks like Fearless is just going to make the casual walk. 
back around the jungle and probably into the mid lane. No real rush for him. He can just farm on the way there. Give a bit of space over to Boombo on the clockwork to get his levels up. Everything just going fine and dandy for both teams so far. But I would say that Among Us, at least in terms of net worth, are still finding themselves ahead. And that is mainly due to the fact that Jackie has had so much pressure applied down to that bot lane. He isn't really farming as well as we're used to seeing him farm. And so, it's been a slower pace. Just saw Arbit on. He's using the torrent to stack up creeps. Oh, yeah. So, nice little trick with the Kunkka you can do. Yeah, you gotta love the uh, vertical spawn box thing, so... Good timing from Abed. Just he's been very efficient in that jungle. He's number one on the net worth now as well. So he's making good use of this free space. And as you mentioned in your dreams, also up there right now. So a little bit more efficient from Among Us. MG Trust, I think they've got to hit these level spikes. They don't necessarily want to play a passive game. They've got really aggressive heroes. So they're just focusing on hitting their power spikes by levels. Masaros is about to hit six. That's gonna be big. And you are getting levels up in Booble and Fearless again just hunting in that jungle. He is. To in your dream, but in your dream is just going to be able to walk away. Fearless does have a haste room bottled up if you really want to try and commit on someone. But the PA probably going to be a bit too, di bit too difficult to try and go on. They'll even be. So the pressure is going to be applied once again onto Jackie. Is now even marches rotated on the silencer. They are probably just going to start setting up for that bottom T1. But top lane in your dream. It's going to go down. Fearless trying to chase March, but that damn creeps in his way. <laughs> he finally gets past it onto March. Now with all that damage he has, he knows he can get this kill, but he does back off for a bit. Now going back in, they do get it with the lightning strike out from Masteros. But here comes Cuckoo. In fact, never mind. Cuckoo cancels his TP. Two big pickoffs there at the top lane from Motivate Trust and Zephyr. One more. It's going to get eight the remnant. It will be one more. Maseros able to get a double, but now Arbit is in with the X. But even with the X out, you're not really going to be able to kill anyone right now. Not fearless anyway on the Unlord. And they'll have to leave him be and maybe just try to get those bounty runes, which they are down at the bot lane. Cuckoo is taking two for the team. Yeah, you're not too happy about trading like that from Among Us, though. They put up a lot of resources to save a tier 1. In the end, MG Trust are just going to go back in. They've reset. They've got level 3 Diabolic Edict. They will look for that objective, and this is the right play for MG Trust. You need to start shrinking that map down, make it harder for Among Us to get farm on their three cores. I mean, they've got Kunkka plus Weaver plus PA. These heroes do need initial farm, and it's going to be slow going if they don't find it. Even in their dream, saving up for his Battle Fury, so it's the standard Dyer's Battle Fury PA. Your farm is going to escalate once you have that up, but losing that top tier one, of course, means that the map will shrink down just a bit, and MG Trust is going to have more openings to play aggressive here. That they are. We'll look to the mid lane soon, I'm sure, Motivate. I mean, with that Lurstrak Underlord combination, it's very hard not to just take towers. Uh, they'll slowly but surely start making their way over. In your dream, just trying to rush for a Battle Fury build-up. Of course, his strength is going to be in the later stages of the game. Just needs that farming tool for now. We did just see Arbit, of course, as well. It, he's just going straight for the BKB rush, but top lane, Boom Bell. He's having a bit of a bit of a cheeky look. See if he can find anyone to hookshot onto, but he's going to wait for his level 7. He'll just soak some XP off Maseros. Meanwhile, mid lane, a group up is there now from Fearless. It's going to be around with Q on the Void Spirit. Radiant structures are fortified. This is one thing that Among Us is going to have to do quite a bit, I think, is really apply a lot of defense in this mid lane. Fearless can just tank the tier 1 tower hits quite a bit on this Underlord. There's, uh, there's not really much they can do about it either. He'll get another haste rune as well on the Underlord now, so he can chase in as in your dream. It started on Boom Bell. Hookshot is back oh though from Boom Bell. In your dream in danger, he's going to blink strike away in the boat. Is going to be enough to finish off the clockwork. Q though is going to chase down March. Hit of Malice is going to be dropped by Fearless. March getting body blocked up by Q and should eventually drop it in your dream. Going to go back onto Maseros with Zephyr. 
they do get the last track. Very good trade out for Among Us. In fact, Arbet's going to look for more now. Jackie starting on Cuckoo. Hit of Malice dropped by Fearless. They're going to try and go onto the Weaver. Zephyr. In fact, it was the Earth Spirit they go on. They do kill off Zephyr. Cuckoo is still Sakuching around. Does have time lapse. Just in case he needs it, but in your dream, gonna be the one to jump in on Q. Meanwhile, Jackie going after Arbit. They have the Pit of Malice and the Battery Assault. Arbit, he has no help around. The Kong's push back. They've killed off Q. They don't want to lose Arbit here, and they will. He will go down to the Conker. Back onto Cuckoo. This Weaver gonna try and Sakuchi away. Boom Bell has a hook shot in one, but he won't use it. They just want the T1 tower. And it was a lot of chaos in that mid lane, but MG Trust, they got what they came for. They are going to be able to safely back off now. They barely eke out a win in that engagement as well. Just slightly more gold going out their way. They do manage to finish up some key items from that fight and the tower. So you've got the Rod of Atos now in Fearless. That chain root is in play. They've already got the chain stuns on top of it. The remnant plays, the cog plays, the follow-up from Maseros. So that is going to pile on. And you do want some early BKBs here if you're Among Us. You talked about it in Abed. Still a long ways off for Kunkka, and of course a very long way off from finding that on our PA and on, and on our Weaver. So we'll see if they prioritize that down the line, but you've got a huge spike here for MG Trust. They can get a lot of damage out and a lot of control out early on. Oh, Masteros going to show up, up at that top lane. Doesn't really have anything to set up onto Cuckoo, just, just applying pressure, but mid lane, Zephyr. Trying to queue. Global Science is out. They do have the boat flying in onto Fearless, but Fearless, he actually, can you imagine dodge that with the Illusion Rune? I'm not 100% sure. He'll go for the Dark Rift for now. Just trying to run away. Going back in with Jackie. He'll drag Jackie out, but Boom Bell, he was there with the hook shot. March is probably going to drop and does. Boom Bell may just die for this, or maybe not Fearless. He only went back to the T1 tower, so they could reinitiate now. It was a bit of a bait play out from MG Trust. Back onto Arbet. Arbet's trying to run. Do they have the control for it? They're trying. GG Branch is placed down. Arbet's still in trouble. The turret, not going to be enough. Fearless able to take the kill on the Underlord again. And I thought that was going to be a very bad Dark Rift play, John. But he went back towards the T1 mid tower. And they just reinitiated and it looked like Among Us. They thought they had a free, uh, a free Clockwork kill. Yeah, that Cuckoo, uh... he's not done yet. Fearless is willing to fight back, and that Firestorm's doing a lot of damage. He will get the time lapse out of him. TP away now, but Q is there with the Aether Remnant. Oh, a very cocky TP play from Cuckoo. Sukuchi is there, and oh! Hookshot perfect from Burn Bell. Beautiful hook. You gotta love that alley oop. They find a nice set of kills. And it's that spike from MG Trust. The Rod of Eidos does a lot of work. Fearless did a calculated play. You know, he drags Jackie back, but they had an infest to play with. So they both just TP back in and they make it no, work. He, he just opens me. up the push. Yeah, <laughs> just fooling Among Us, luring them in, and they get to Melt Towers. So again, a beautiful thing about that draft. They just Giant melt the objectives. Tower. So they win fights, they melt objectives, they shrink the map. Among Us is still getting some farm out on In Your Dream. He's one part way from Radiant that Battle Fury, but he needs a lot more on top of it. And he's still going to need some space. Q is in trouble mid lane. They roll in. Boombell around. Dissimulate is going to be there, but he does go the wrong way. I, I guess there wasn't really a way out, but top lane, Arbit, is going to be caught on this Kunkka. He throws the bow down, and his team's trying to rush to him. Boom Bell trying to cut him off. He's going to get caught out here by Cuckoo and March. Looks like Boom Bell is going to accept the fact that he is dead. In your dream with a DD rune, does take the kill. And Cuckoo trying to scout out for more, but Jackie going to go for a TP. Is going to make it out, so instead, they're on to Maseros, but they don't have a way to cancel it. Oh, the roll didn't connect from Zephyr. It was short. The Maseros is going to get out scot-free. Yeah, I mean, they still managed to find a clock for kill at the least. You'll take what you can get. There's still a big lead here from MG Trust, but your cores on Among Us aren't falling too far behind. The only real here to get some scuffed farm here is Cuckoo, but even then he's ahead of Masaro, so you're not looking too bad. You're still waiting. In fact, you're not waiting for the Battle Fury. It's already up and in your dream. So his farm's going to accelerate, going into the Desolator, into a BKB. So we're still waiting for two items for our PA to be comfy in the middle of these fights. It 
still a ways off from uh, Abed, <laughs> just a recipe away from BKB at least. I, I don't mean to interrupt on, but Jackie's almost got the MKB. So, mm. yeah. <laughs> We, we've seen this many times with Jackie on the life stealer. He always goes life stealer into PA. He needs a demon edge. He's just about 2k off. Once that MKB's up, in your dream, he's not going to be feeling that safe. Yeah. Uh, it's that back and forth with a PA life stealer. The timings are just so awkward. There is a smoke here from Among Us, though. Dealers. Got a haste rune, has been caught, but will pop the haste. X is going to be there from Arbid into the boat. They want to try and kill off this Underlord. He is a tanky boy. Hook shot in. They have got the damage. Boom Bell. He tried to help, but he will be the second death. And that means more in for March and more kills for In Your Dream. It's uh, the best result you could hope for there from Among Us. They're just finding the pickoffs. When MG Trust does split up, their power isn't that strong, so they're going to look for a tier 1 to take. While you do that, though, Q's just shoving up top lane, so there's going to be a little bit of pressure in the top lane. But they're going to find the control in that bot jungle now because of this mid tier 1. So they've managed to recover some control. And you trust that uh, not in position to fight back yet. Jackie just happy enough to farm up. Does not want to get caught with his pants down before the MKB is up here. That you do not. So they'll take a bit of a period here to farm both teams. As they are getting relatively close to getting some core items up. But bot lane, Cuckoo, he's going to be fine. He'll just Sakuchi TB. They will not be able to catch him out in time. And I think you do want to wait for Jackie to have the MKB up on the Lifestealer before you engage again. They might just go as four though, MG Trust. It looks like they want to try and apply... Bit of pressure here on to uh, Among Us. Get another team fight going. Of course, in your dream, he definitely doesn't want to fight because he's got his Deso coming up in about 400 gold. No rush for him. He just wants to secure that itemization. But mid lane. Cuckoo. Sakuchi going to wear off. Masteros sees him. He has the Yules, but Cuckoo will Sakuchi away again. Q. Ate the Remnant. Just going for that bounty rune. March trying to D ward, but it is going to cost him his life. He will drop. Silence. Meanwhile, top lane, Boom Bill going to go in with Jackie with a nice Cox pushback. Ooh. Oh, the blink strike in your dream. Went straight back into the Cox. Boom Bill, he has a hook shot anyway. He'll hold him down. Bit of a panic blink strike there from in your dream, but it only makes matters worse for him. Bot right. lane, Arbit. He's been caught out. Masteros just going for this solo. This is a dangerous pickup to try and get for himself. They're just going to turn around, but here comes the rest of MG Trust. They want to fight back. But Zephyr is going to roll out of there. Ate the Remnant. Will not connect. Zephyr is just fine. And that has bought enough time for In Your Dream, even though he is dead, to have the Deso up. I can't say the same for Cuckoo, though. Aether Remnant going to lock him down into the Split Earth, and that is going to be Cuckoo gone. Maceros will pick up another on the left track. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if March is going to be happy about this uh, Weaver pick anymore. It's been a bit behind in farm. The utility is starting to come out, but look at MG Trust. Every time they win these fights, they can just make a straight run for a tower. They've got Siege Creep, and they've got max level Diabolic Edict ready. Is going to force out the Fortify at least, so they get to hold back. They do do a ton of damage on In Your Dream. Perhaps they can get a couple of lucky crits and kind of force them away. They do smoke up. They do smoke up on Among Us. They they are desperate for a team fight right now. That's for sure. Especially with this Deso pickup, they want to try and make something happen with In Your Dream. MG Trust, they haven't really backed off either. They're in the Dire Triangle right now, just holding that high ground. In Your Dream, I'm not sure if you realize that Jackie does have the Monkey King bar on the Life Stealer. I'll bet. I'm going to show up down to the bot lane, but does have the X back. He's going to be safe, but I can't say the same for his tier 2 tower. That is uh, definitely just going to die to Masteros' Diabolic Edict. They do pop the glyph, and among us, the only other thing they can do is go for a Roshan play. So they're sacrificing the tier 2. They'll go for the Rosh play. They motivate. They scan it out, but I don't believe they'll be able to make it in time. They could try. They're going to TP in. 
to that top tier too. Global Science out. Looks like Boomball's looking for a hook shot in. Global Science not going to last long enough. He's in. Oh. But the Aegis is going to go to In Your Dream. He clicks faster, and Boomball is going to drop. Still, they'll go for the team fight now. On to March. He will die. In Your Dream. He is your stuff. He's going to be fine. But Q is still. Oh, it's rather Arbet that was stuck there. Looks like Q will just chase him down. Jackie now will follow up, but Arbet will pop the BKB. He's going to be alright. Or maybe not. Masros cuts him off now. Arbet still trying to run away. BKB wears out. He does not have an Aegis. He will die to Fearless. And that'll be uh, another successful team fight. There's not much else to say here for Motivate. And you get yeah, in I mean... your dream out with the Aegis, which is great and all, but I don't think Motivate really cares too much. In fact, mid lane oh. Cuckoo. Time lapse is going to be there in time. But he does almost just drop to Q and Jackie. Yeah, it's... Masaros uh, is, uh... It... He's still around, John, the left rack. <laughs> Cuckoo will run the right way. Meanwhile... Oh, Felix is going to spot him out now. Cuckoo... Oh, boy. Gets rooted up. Rod of Atos is there. Masaros is running in. There probably is enough time here. The net. Masaros... Oh, he gets the Yules off. He caught the spider. Whatever it is, the bug. He got him. <laughs> oh. Dark Rift play into the mid lane. Fearless. Hook oh. shot, Boom Bell just straight in onto Arbit. There is no downtime on the Motivate Trust. They just want to keep killing people. March, he's gone. That tier 2 tower, it's not going to last very long. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. And I'll tell you what, John. Boom, there it, goes. it doesn't seem like it's necessarily the team of Motivate that's the problem, but what you ban against them in the draft stage. Anything they bring out, they just seem to make work. That, that they do. That they do. You know, we were having a bit of a giggle when the Life Sealer came out because you let a pick like this slide through, even then, sometimes. We, we have seen Masaros play this as well, so... The flexibility, I mean, you saw them just focus on Q in the first phase. They, they take out Morana and the Tiny. Then you let all of this slide through. The Boom Bell Clock doing a lot of plays. The Fearless Underlord. He might Zephyr. find more. Oh, he ran into Boom Bell, John. That's not the guy he wants to go on right now. He does get four stopped out by Cuckoo and rolls straight back into Jackie. Are they going to try and fight here? They are rushing in among us. They're looking to pound up. Counterplay though, MG Trust, they're not done yet. Jump in, Q once again setting up on this Void Spirit into the hook shot onto Arbed. The Global Science Arbed, he's gonna pop the B key, B and the boat. Boom Bell, he's gonna force it up to the low ground. He will survive. What? They're gonna find him. Hopefully, Cuckoo's having a look. Meanwhile, though, In Your Dream is dying. Jackie, gonna go for a chase back onto no. March while Q goes <laughs> after In Your Dream, but In Your Dream will barely get away. He will survive on 5 HP. <laughs> and this is a really sad moment when you're scared of the POS 4 Void Spirit as a POS 1 PA. Yeah, it's uh, not, not clean. That was his 10 second BKB charge. They have ages, but Among Us are the ones scared. That's never a good sign for your team. They're posturing for the high ground, and guess what? With a less rack, that doesn't last long, though. They've got Jackie there, though, John. It's a lot of damage, but Jackie, he's just yeah. fighting back. He'll man fight this one. There goes your Aegis. Arbed has been rooted in place. They're going to turn back around onto In Your Dream, but he will blink strike out of there. Can they fight back now? Hook shot. Not going to land from Boombell. Arbed is going to X up Fearless, who is chasing down Cuckoo. MG Trust, they're not going to go high ground, they need a reset, but they've got a 7k net worth lead. For the first time this game, Jackie has overtaken the net worth board on the Lifestealer, and he has the Manta up now. The, things are looking very, very tough for Among Us. It's going to be really dicey now, they're way too far behind, they've put all their eggs in one basket, it's really about In Your Dream getting the burst off. They've got a ton of control, but you know, the panel was talking about this, right? The life stealer into silencer, and you don't necessarily want a BKB to purge off. Well, Manta does the same job. Does give Jackie some good stats as well. So our life stealer is looking good. He's saving for his own basher, and when you're 8k up, when you've got such a tanky lineup with no big cooldowns, you just keep smoking, keep running. 
They will, and they're trying to hunt down Q down to the bot lane right now, but they don't know. Motivate Trust is right behind them, just pincering them in. Q trying to avoid, but Zephyr does get the Rolling Thunder. Still the, or rather, Rolling Boulder. He is going to use himself up. Global Silence there, but now from the back lines, Q buys back, and they're going in for a fight. A big pit of Malice. Jackie, he'll get to work on to this PA, but in your dream, he'll go down to the low ground, back onto Maceros. The Lesh Rack low, oh, but another hook shot. Fernbell landing perfectly, holding down in your dream. He's just trying to TP out of there, but the Pit of Malice gonna stop all of that. He gets rooted in place. He'll blink strike forward. Maceros, meanwhile, killing off March, and in your dream, he is stuck in the tree line. Q, oh, he was ready no. for it with the, with the Astral Step, just holds him down with the Aether Remnant again. Radiant structures. And here comes the Dark Rift. Everyone <laughs> oh, the taxi. Arbed. Rod of Atos onto Arbed. Arbed, he just got run over by the MG Trust oh, Taxi. Oh god. Oh god. He was jaywalking, it... John. Arbed, you can't jaywalk <laughs> like that. This is this is just a clinic for MG Trust. 27 to 13, 10k lead. And Cuckoo's happy playing this off lane Weaver, but. I'm not sure we're seeing any impact at all in speaking no. of. No, well, the only impact is he's dying, John. It's great impact to motivate trust. They are getting a lot of gold out of Cuckoo. He's trying to run, but Cuckoo is going to go down to Maceros. And uh, this will probably be the first lane of Barracks as he does not have buyback and orders in your dream. One Barracks down, and if you're MG Trust, you might just say, screw it, we can go for another. Yeah, it's a lush rack. Look at it, it just melts. It, it just doesn't stand. Boombell, oh, hook shot, not going to be on target March. Nice sidestep. Q, going to get jumped on in your dream. That's dangerous. Run of Atos, not going to be there in time. The four star play was there, but March will be the one to die. Zephyr's going to roll in. Ooh. This could be a last ditch kind of defense here. Nice boat is out, Arbed landing on two. They'll try to take down Fearless, but he start the car. Is it going to be enough? Not quite. They do get him through the Dark Rift. Jackie getting rolled Ooh. on, but the Rage TP, not going to be enough. They do crit him to death. That's a lot of gold out for In Your Dream. Some very much needed gold for Among Us. Ooh. They are yeah, still going to be two Raxes down, though. Then I mean, they get 2.5k gold out of that. You're still fairly happy. They can sort of, kind of deal with super creeps in their lanes. So they, sh they should be able to get a, a decent pace and shoving out at least. But if you're MG Trust, you're not too upset. You, you kind of overstay your welcome anyway. You were diving a bit deep. They still maintain an 11k lead. They've got some big spikes still yet to come out. We're seeing the AC build up here for Jackie next. It's a long ways off as he just finishes up his, uh, his basher. So we're still going to wait for that. But... The bigger thing is that Among Us gets to go into that Roche once more. So Aegis Cheese on the table. Respawns are fairly slow. Should be able to clear out another objective for themselves. Yeah, I mean, this is just so important for Among Us to take. They uh, they cannot afford to let these go the way of MG Trust. But Boombell has scouted it out. Still Zephyr, knowing he can try for the steal, is going to be there to make sure he cannot. And Aegis and Cheese will go the way of Among Us. It's like Arbed will hold the cheese and In Your Dream will take the Aegis and look at In Your Dream's build up already, John. Divine Rapier oh, yes. has been cured. I could not agree with him more. Step lively now. Yep. Uh, I don't, you know, there's nowhere, no, nowhere to go but up. It's, it's just that dire of a game. It's, it doesn't look bad in paper, 8k behind, but two Raxes behind is a bigger issue. The Life Steal is just getting so much control in the middle of this as well. We'll see if In Your Dream gets to farm it up. Big smoke up, Zephyr gonna break the smoke on the Earth Spirit. In your dream, trying to run, pops the BKB as Q was around. Q, he's been very dangerous on this pos 4 Void Spirit tonight, and last night for that matter. Just can't risk fighting into him, but they don't have the BKB now up on In Your Dream. It's gonna be down for a minute. So they're gonna go for the fight. The tier 3 tower push here with Maceros. The Diabolic Edict yeah. for Zephyr, he's going to roll oh. in onto the Lesh Rack. Peter Malice there, meanwhile in, in your dream. dream, he's been caught out. He almost goes down, but he barely gets away. 100 HP on that PA. Now Boat onto two, but Maceros does get the BKB and Q. We'll be able to dissimilate. 
They also have a repair kit. So they can oh. heal up that T3 and it will remain healthy. Of course they do. They do manage to defend. I think Among Us are happy enough to just bail out. They hold the Aegis for now. For now. See if they do uh, opt to utilize that. It's a really risky spot. right? If, if In Your Dream gets caught out with the Aegis, he does not have buyback. So if he dies twice, that's it. You're probably looking at Mega Creeps coming out. And they play cautiously. MG Trust as well. Don't overextend too much. Go back. Reset. They know they're fighting into Aegis, so they're not quite in a rush. They're just forcing these uses out. Like, you look at the BKB duration now. In your dreams, down to 6 second BKB charge. And once that's down to 5, you're talking about so much more presence here for Masaros. So much more control that can fly in in that key time. And the Ags is up on Q, so he's got to silence off the bat when he jumps in. That's going to make for even more initiation potential here for MG Trust. Yeah, double silence is going to be quite painful double here for Among seven. Us. Especially with these low BKB timers. The Mel Hawkshot is going to land onto Cuckoo, but he's looking for more. He left the Weaver behind for Q to just hold down with the Aether Remnant. Meanwhile, Fearless, he just keeps finding Haze Strunes, this Underlord. He gets another onto March with the Rod of Atos and the Pit of Malice, and March cannot escape. A double kill out for Jackie. No buyback on Cuckoo, but March has one. He'll commit it straight away. Meanwhile, in your dream, I believe he's rushing to buy the Divine Rapier from the other secret shop. He does. Oh boy. We're all in. Yeah, it's, it's the only play left. They are really tanky in MG Trust Saido, as long as Fearless is dead center. So they've got to watch how they jump in here. If they can find a pickoff and clean up afterwards, that's one way to go. And they do still have the Aegis for a bit longer as well in the moment. So I believe they've got a minute and a half uh, around that time on In Your Dream's second life, so they should play with it. I think you can't be defensive anymore with Aegis plus this Divine. Oh, They've no. had, they have to make a play. Uh, John Arved was trying to D ward an Observer ward. They smoked before he finished. Uh, and they got scouted smoking. Radiant they know they have the Divine Rapier on the PA now as well, by the way, John. They should have seen it. So your surprise factor is gone on In Your Dream. No, he's just got to hope to outplay Motivate Trust in this next big team fight. Step lively now. Your Admiral is on board. It's, a, it's a risky spot, and your dream has a lot to worry about. Like, the silences are ridiculous, his BKB is down to still 6 seconds. I, I want to talk how ridiculous it is that Fearless gets to keep <laughs> his Clumsy Net. You know, I mean, it's an Underlord, he rushed Atos, he has Clumsy Net, it's been causing so many issues. Just all the roots coming in. With his Pit of Malice. It's just so value when you can get that done. And once he hits his 25, that's going to be worse. You've got to watch yourself there. They do see Q. They do. Q. Can get rolled on. Nice setup there from Zephyr. And Q will die. In your dream. Does jump in for the follow-up damage. And he has plenty of it. Very, very nice pick up there for Among Us. And that will give them a bit of breathing room. Does allow Arbet to have that, uh, that AC up now. So a bit more... Uh, Added armor and attack speed for his team. Aegis is going to expire, so in your dream, not going to feel quite as safe with that Divine Rapier any longer. But at least he has a free slot now for that Basher into Abyssal Blade he's looking for, and it looks like Arbed does give him the cheese anyway. So he's got that yeah. cheese for the next team fight. But Jackie's got the full Abyssal Blade up now. It's just on the Courier. It's going to be a big piece of control coming out for Jackie. I think what Among Us needs to wait for now is Cuckoo's Ags. He's 400 gold away from it. Once you have the Ags, you can maybe go for the saving place. It is harder now, as mentioned. The nerfs are pretty... It makes it really hard for Cuckoo to be in a good spot. But that is one way to keep Cuckoo. IYing the game. Cuckoo, he's so close to having the Aghanim Scepter, he couldn't afford to die. In your dream, wants to go after Maceros, but Maceros, he has four legs on this left track. He runs pretty fast. Oh, and poor March. Oh. Oh, poor March. Getting caught out. It's a tough game for a support silencer. And he, uh, he does die once again. In fact, he had a gem on him. Yeah. That's a pretty painful That's loss. It's, uh, it's over to Boom Bill now. A bit curious why they didn't just give that to Sephir. But again, that opens up the high ground with a numbers advantage without worrying about global silence. They could try their luck here. They've got to make this one count. 
this is Megas. For Motivate Trust, if they can get through this tier 3 and the racks. They know the Divine's there on In Your Dream, so they're very cautious about how far forward they go. But if they root him in place, or they stun him up in Q, who's he got? It's going to be In Your Dream. Oh They're going to try for the burst play. In Your Dream, he's been controlled up the hook shots there, but no. The Aghanim set the time lapse. It saves the day. In Your Dream, he will survive. He gets two. He's going for more. Maseros will kill off Zephyr. Jackie's jackie has been left behind. The Dark Rift down. They forgot Jackie. He got the X. I believe that was the X coming out from Abed. Just taking the right customer back home. Oh, and Abed. And they get the punishment. It's, uh, it's a big player. Among Us manages to hold out. They stave off Megas. Uh, MG Trust have got to retink their approach up. And they lose a big chunk of that lead. Down to 6k now for MG Trust. Um, they have to find a way to deal with that PA. They, they had the right idea. The time lapse does save in the end. Cuckoo was allowed Ooh. to farm that up. And this Weaver is now paying dividends for the side was, of Among Us. That was such a close call. But in your dream, I mean, he was... It, it looked like he was gone. He must have had, you know, 150, 200 HP. It looked like it was one or two auto attacks away from dying. But Cuckoo coming in clutch on the Weaver. Then, of course, as you pointed out, John Arbid with the X back on Jackie. Very, very nice from him. They can farm some tier 4 items up now, which is even better. Yeah, they're they're in a really good spot now among us. They they've got a lot to play for. They've still got room to grow here on In Your Dream. He's saving up for his own abyssal. He's gonna have that up in short order. MG Trust. I think they need additional lockdown. Like a hex would be very useful here, although. Arbed forced to BKB TP, but Boombell's around the corner with the hook shot and Arbed, he cannot escape. They need to fight in your dream, he jumps in. He no. kills off Boombell, Masteros gets Arbed, in your dream, is falling low. Cuckoo's around to help him out, he's trying out to Masteros and Fearless is going to cancel the taxi again. He's going to go in, but in your dream, he hits the cheese, he'll jump back in onto the last track. Zephyr gets Masteros, the pit of mouse holding them down, but everything's fine so far. Cuckoo though, he's down now, so is Zephyr. In your dream, trying to run away back onto Q, but the eighth the Remnant gonna lock him down. He got the Void Spirit, but can he get himself out with the Divine? He barely can. He's on 200 HP. No, the time no. lapse from Cuckoo, what? dragging him back into the team fight. Jackie is chasing with the Siege Creep. He'll get back on top with the run of Atos out <gasps> from Fearless. It looks like In Your Dream is gonna die. Oh, the no. Divine's on Jackie. Cuckoo, what have you done? What have you done, Cuckoo? <laughs> March is gonna go. Cuckoo's trying to run in your dream. He wants his divine rapier back. He's on Jackie. The time lapse away from Cuckoo now, saving the life of in your dream. But everyone else is dying. No buybacks. Oh boy, what has he done? Cuckoo, why? March will never give him Weaver again, John. <laughs> it is never happening again. Not after that. Oh no. You gotta count to three. You, you gotta count it down and figure it out. But that fight lasted so long and in your dream. Oh, he jumps on the queue in your dream. He's gonna try, but Jackie has the abyssal. And look at the damage coming out in your dream. He dies back. He can't survive. Zephyr's gonna die as well. They are wiped. It's only Zephyr left to defend, but they're onto the ancient and Arbit says screw it. Just GG. <laughs> that is not the way you want to lose game number two that is that's painful that hurt me yeah yeah it, that that was not nice i, I don't know what else to say mm -hmm. that that time lapse back um, and oh cuckoo you you had to i mean you had to tell everyone you asked for it you know Mark, you saw Mark what he was gonna... trying to do he, he healed him up to full hp he thought they could reinitiate maybe playing a bit of Bit of a casino game, right? Trying to yeah, trying yeah. to get those crits out from in your dream. I mean, it's a very high risk kind of play. It definitely wasn't necessary. No, no, absolutely not. Now, that that was an exciting game too. What I want you guys to do, the viewers, vote for who you think was the MVP at bts.gg slash monster MVP. Let us know who you think carried um, MG Trust Tree. It was a lot closer in game number two. There were mm. some moments where MG Trust did overextend and IYD went in for the big uh, all in play, but you know, sometimes sometimes the time lapse just doesn't pay off. That's that's no. just it. And by the way, John, who's your MVP? Before we do, um, uh, mine's gonna be uh, mine's gonna be fearless on the Underlord, hands down. Okay, 
I, I can accept that. I, I personally think Boombell did a lot off the back of that right. clockwork. Just he was setting up. And the combinations with the Lesh, he just enabled Maseros, he enabled a follow-up from Fearless. I think Boombell deserves that call out. He was just the one making it happen with that clock. And I think that is pretty much ban worthy, but you can't ban all these heroes in the first phase anymore. No. No, you can't. With that, John, we are going to head off to a short break. And of course, after that break, we'll be back to the panel so they can break down what happened in this game number two.